cares? Welcome to Meat Eater Trivia, the only game show where conservation always wins. I'm your host, Spencer Newarth, and today we're joined by Brody Henderson, Seth Morris, Randall Williams, Chester Floyd, Marge Smith, Corey Calkins, Logan Dove, and Colin Fatma. This is a 10-round quiz show with questions from Meat Eater's four verticals, which are hunting, fishing, conservation, and cooking, and there is a prize. Meat Eater will donate $500 to the conservation organization of the winner's choosing. For the stat of the week this week, we're looking at listener performance. By tracking over 300 responses to polls on the Meat Eater Reddit page, here's what I've learned about the audience's trivia prowess. Brody, do you have any predictions for what our audience averages for points per game in trivia? Mm, six. Six. Would be any other guesses in the room? Now, these are folks who responded to These the are poll. self-reported scores. Self-reported. Right. That's mm. right. They probably <laughs> would have counted swan. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like six. Six. Okay. I'll here, say five. Our listeners average 5.39 points per game. Those are good guesses, mm. which is nearly identical to Ryan Callahan. About 7% of the mm-hmm. audience reported that they've scored 9 or 10 points in one of the last five games. 7% is also how many listeners reported that they've scored 1 or 2 points in the last five games. The largest grouping were listeners who said they scored 5 or 6 points in a game, which was 37% of the audience. So we have a pretty smart audience. Yeah, I mean, you come here and get 6 right. That's you're right. in it. Mm-hmm. Here's I mean, our the dumb ones aren't going to report... I don't I mean, think. Yeah, or or you know, they maybe instead of two, they got a four, like like Randall Round said. Round it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. True. Get a half point here, half point there. More elastic. Uh, <laughs> more elastic. <laughs> well, rules. if you're counting those swan answers. <laughs> you know. Now here's our zero percenter question of the week, which tests how much knowledge players have retained from previous <clears throat> games. This question was from episode 388. The topic was conservation, and nobody got it right. This invasive plant, which is a climbing perennial has been nicknamed the vine that ate the south. What are your guesses? Oh, God, Anybody know this? Man, I was in this one and don't even remember. Mm. Still a tough question. We don't even have any I guesses. I thought Giannis got it right. Nobody got it right. Yanni said it. he knew it after he heard. Is it kudzu? It's not kudzu. That's right. That's you got right. it, Seth. Is it? The correct answer is kudzu. The incorrect answers given were knapweed, ivy, red vine, buckthorn, loop, looping lupin, wild grape, and creeping myrtle. Hmm. Kudzu. Won't forget that again. We have some housekeeping to get to. In a previous game of trivia, we had a question about what white bird is featured on the federal Mm. duck stamp that expires in 2024. (laughs) The correct answer was tundra swan. This caused some drama because Randall answered swan. Drama, Randall. Which I didn't give him credit for. Now, I felt bad about this. I don't remember this at all. I felt bad about how this unfolded, Randall, so I'm going to give you a (laughs) chance to redeem yourself. Here's what we're going to do. Phil is going to show you four pictures of swans, and everything you need to identify them is in each picture. If you can pick out which one is the tundra swan, then I'll give you a point, and you and Brody will be going to a tiebreaker to settle that game. Come but on. if you get it wrong, then nothing like changes. This. this is very uncomfortable. And Brody remains the winner. Randall, do you agree to these terms? You feel okay about this? Sure. I'm I'm identifying the swans on the screen using... You need to find the tundra swan. Find the tundra swan. I gotta, I'm, Brody, I'm, I'm not, lodging my protest now. I'm not even going to check in with Brody. He can sit over here and be grumpy if he wants to, but this is how we're going to decide it. God, I Phil, wasn't expecting Phil, pull this. up the photo. You need to tell me, is it A, B, C, or D? Ooh. Who is the tundra swan? What are you seeing, Randall? Well, a swan's a swan. I think I, <laughs> yeah. I think I made that clear last time. I going be, torn between B and D. Uh, Does anybody think they know? Looking or, at these four pictures, I think, I I think you're just trying to fool me. I think it's all of the above. Oh God! Or none of the above. Maybe. Who's the tundra swan? But Spencer usually doesn't trick you, so that's what I. I'm gonna go I with. Think I know. If you want what? to see what Randall is seeing, uh, Phil has this up. You can see it on our YouTube channel. Randall, what is your answer? A, uh, B, C, or D? I'm going to go with A. A? Is incorrect. Oh, Shit. Oh, 
Do you have another uh, guess well, for what, what, what I, you would go with? My actual answer was going to be D, and then I talked myself out of it at the last minute because I thought that I was just... How about D? D is also incorrect. How about B? <laughs> Here's the deal, Randall. They are all trumpeter swans. None of them are a tundra swan. This was all a setup. You've humiliated me, too. Yeah. You've humiliated me. And that is why, Randall, we are not going to give you a point for just writing down swan. Brutal. Wow. Every one of those swans is a hey, trumpeter swan. I was humiliated right, right there with you. I didn't even think we played those kinds of games around here. I'll have you know I had nothing to do with that. Uh -huh. now can I, we, why couldn't we have done this after the round of trivia? Now I'm... All in my head. <laughs> now you're flustered. <laughs> Razzle. I'll help you out, though, Randall. Trumpeters and tundras look almost identical. Some ways to tell them apart are that trumpeters get bigger than tundras. Tundras often have yellow markings below the eye. Trumpeters often have lipstick markings on their bills. And the tundras call is much more high-pitched than the deep voice of a trumpeter. So you're telling me it's very hard to distinguish trumpeter and tundra swans. I'm telling you, if you knew the difference, you would have known <laughs> that none of those are a tundra swan. Fair enough. Fair enough. Now the Shelby Index humiliated. for today's <laughs> round is a five, so I'm officially putting us on perfect score alert. With Whoa. that, we're on to the game of trivia. Play the drop, Phil. Look, I need to know what I stand to win. Everything. How's that? You stand to win everything. Now, had you trumped me, Randall, and said none of those are a tundra swan, I would have been in a real pickle. I wouldn't have had an answer for that. I, I wouldn't have. I would have well, been like, okay, well, I guess that you and Brody are going to a tiebreaker. Well, you 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 laid a perfect trap. It worked well. <laughs> Question one: The topic is conservation. This will be multiple choice, and this is our listener question of the week, which was won by Alex Sutherland for sending this great question. Alex is going to get a book signed by Steve. What is the only land mammal that's native to Hawaii? Is it a deer, a bat, a squirrel, or a monkey? Sorry, I forgot to put the multiple choices up there. What is the only land mammal that's native to Hawaii? Your four choices are deer, bat, squirrel, or monkey. A confident Seth. Seth, you've probably been in Hawaii the most recent out of any, anybody in this room. Do you think you know it? You just have a guess. Oh, I just guess, but I don't know if my guess makes sense. Again, the only land mammal native to Hawaii, deer, bat, squirrel, monkey. I didn't think there was, I honestly thought there was like nothing native, native to that island or those islands. Is everybody ready? Marge, are you ready? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Seth saying bat, Marge saying bat, and she drew a great bat. Chester and Randall and Corey and Colin all saying bat. Logan saying squirrel. Brody saying bat. The correct answer is bat. The room did very well. Wait, land and a, mammal? A bat is not land a sky mammal. mammal. <laughs> it's considered a land <laughs> mammal. It was not a trick. Every land mammal in Hawaii has been introduced by humans except for the Hawaiian horty bat. It's believed that the bat arrived in Hawaii about 10,000 years ago, migrating there from the mainland in North America. The species is considered endangered, with the greatest threats being habitat loss and decreased insect populations due to their use of pesticides. Uh, I'm sorry to embarrass everyone, um, but can you raise your hand if you did not say bat? <laughs> it is it's just Logan. more efficient. <laughs> Logan did not say bat. <laughs> okay, land, I'm not, not going to cut throw that me off. <laughs> I, I wrote down bat, and then I was like, it's not a land mammal. <laughs> Question two, the topic is fishing. What river has the most white sturgeon in North America? Hmm. What river has the most white sturgeon in North America? A torn room, no quick answers, but now a few folks. I think they may have found it in their brain somewhere. Chester, do you have this one right? I believe so. Okay, Seth, you think you have this one right? Mm, no. Again, Maybe, but what, no. What river has the most white surgeon in North America? Oh. North America. 
Mm. Whole continent. Did you put a South America river down? Mm. Okay. <laughs> what river has the most white sturgeon in North America? Randall, do you have this one right? I don't have this one, period. Oh, okay. Still thinking. Don't think I'm going to get it right. I've got two mm -hmm. in my head, and one of them's right. Back to the bats that migrated to Hawaii. They said they made two different migrations, 10,000 years ago and then about 900 years ago. They showed up again all on their own. Why don't you give us a little extra info on white sturgeon? Mm, not going to help you there. <laughs> Chet, why don't you put the second answer you have down and then cross it out? Sure. Little little treat for the YouTube audience, Chester. You can see what else you were thinking. Is everybody ready? No. <laughs> what river has the most white sturgeon in North America. This is a fish, not a bird. I don't want the white to throw you off. Appreciate that. <laughs> Appreciate that. Corey, do you have this one right? I know I have it wrong. I don't know. I don't think so. This may be a zero percenter, the confidence the room is giving me. Brody writing something down. Randall, do you have an answer? Don't like it. Don't like it, Spencer. Don't think I'm in the right country, but... <laughs> is, is everybody ready? Mmm, man. How <laughs> big are white sturgeon? Not going to help you out <laughs> at all. <laughs> are those the big ones or the little ones? Wait, hold up. Can I change my answer? You can, but we're running out of time. Randall's also changing. Do you have an official time? We like don't have get... we don't have an official time. Sometimes I'll I'll re-listen to an episode and be like, I, we we had too much time there. Yeah, this is gonna be one of those. This I think. might this might be one of those questions. <laughs> is everybody All ready? Right, go ahead. Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Seth saying Columbia, Marge saying Mississippi, I erased Columbia, Chester saying Columbia. What did you cross out there, Chester? Stina. I, Randall saying Columbia, Corey saying Columbia, Colin saying Missouri, Logan saying Mississippi, Brody saying Mississippi. We have a correct answer in the room. It's the Columbia River. Damn it. Mm. I have raised Folks Columbia. Did pretty well. It's estimated that the lower Columbia River alone has about 110,000 white sturgeon. That's more than double the population of second on the list, which would be the Fraser River with a population of 50,000. Although some legends say the fish can reach 2,000 pounds, the world record is just over 1,100 pounds. It was caught by former NHL goalie Kevin Estrada in 2012 on the Fraser River. Where is the Fraser? Can't be seen. There you go. I think... That's what I was trying to think of for my segment. But I think the Skeena might be up there, too. You made but. the right choice. Yeah, they've caught Going bigger ones than Columbia. that one. That one just got like, sure. certified. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think even in the IGFA record books, the, the world record's like 400 pounds. Mm -hmm. But it was obviously one that was kept uh, a long time ago. Question three. The topic is biology. Encyclopedia Britannica defines this as, quote, very small people who live in Africa or a type of plant or animal that is smaller than usual size. Encyclopedia Britannica has two definitions for this word, defines it as very small people who live in Africa, or a type of plant or animal that is smaller than the usual size. A confident Seth and Randall. Randall, you have this one right. Yes, I'm thinking of... One such animal right now that okay. I saw at a zoo in the past year or two. Wow, that's a hint. For really our enjoyed it. Brody, do you have this one right? Spelling? Spelling, I, spelling does not matter. I'm leaning towards the confident side, yeah. Encyclopedia Britannica defines this as very small people who live in Africa or a type of plant or animal that is smaller than the usual size. A Floyd? <laughs> I don't get that one. A Chester Floyd. <laughs> okay, that's good. Small people. You know. <laughs> Is everybody ready? No. Logan confidence over here. He's uh, throwing his hair around. You got this one right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I think I've seen a documentary. Oh, okay. More hints for the room, but it hasn't helped that's Colin or not, Corey. Uh, it's no different than saying that <laughs> dictionary says this. That's why I'm, I'm giving you all the hints you need. <laughs> Colin and Corey, I think we're waiting on you boys. I feel like I have about two more minutes after the last question. <laughs> <laughs> so hold on. <laughs> the room did pretty well there. What, what was the hang-up, Brody, on the last question? Was it um, 
not knowing what the white sturgeon was. Well, there's was. so many damn different kinds of sturgeon. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if those were the great big ones on sure. the West Coast or not. Yeah. All right. Is everybody ready? Marge? Yeah, I just don't know. <laughs> Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Seth and Marge and Chester and Randall saying pygmy. Corey saying dwarf. Colin saying micro. Logan saying pygmy. Brody saying dwarf. The dwarf. Like dwarf. 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 The correct Steven answer. Dwarf. <laughs> the correct answer is pygmy. And how do you spell it? P Y G M Y. Oh, oh Marge, you got it. I did not spell it like Animals that. with a pygmy variety include cormorants, rabbits, elephants, hippos, lemurs, raccoons, owls, and more. The average height of an adult man from the African pygmies is 4 feet 11 inches. It's estimated that there are about 500,000 pygmy people who live in the Congo. Question four. The topic is cooking. Randall, what was the pygmy animal that you saw that delighted you? Um, it had to be a hippo, it, it, right? It was. It was a pygmy hippopotamus at the uh, San Francisco Zoo. Mm -hmm. Very satisfying. Looked like you could take it home. Oh, it also known so as a funny. dwarf hippo. It was so funny. <laughs> question four. The topic is cooking. This next great question comes to us via Avery Hartvigson. If you have a question you think is right for Meat Eater Trivia, you can send it to trivia at themeateater.com. It's believed that the Space Needle restaurant created this type of meal in 1962 when they combined beef with crab. Again, the topic is cooking. It's believed that the Space Needle restaurant created this type of meal in 1962 when they combined beef with crab. Man, I don't... First time it ever happened was in 1960. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Giving, giving out hints. We have a pretty confident room. Spencer, did you go up the Space Needle when you were in Seattle recently? I did not. Mm. No. Walked by it. That's enough for me. I went up to the top of the was the Empire State Building in Chicago. Uh, that's, that's New York that's City. New York. Oh, I'm sorry. What's the Sears Tower or the John Hancock I went building, the which has since been renamed? Willis Tower. Now? The Willis Tower. Yeah, I hate it. Sears Tower was very disappointing. Hmm. Uh, it was foggy that day, and I was like, I don't think I need to do that thing ever again. So I did not go to the top of the space. What were you doing in Seattle? Went to Taylor Swift. Oh, T Swizzle. Mm -hmm. You guys had good seats for that, too. It was very fun, Chester. You know what? Great. I was going to tell you something about her. What do you got? She's tangled up with uh, with uh, animal rights and PETA. Mm. You shouldn't go see her concerts anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think if we followed those rules every time, we wouldn't have phones, wouldn't have computers, wouldn't that, be able to drive our Did I ever show you the picture like. that I have with Taylor Swift? I haven't seen the picture, but I've heard you met her. A couple of Pennsylvania folks. I'll have to show you Cutting something. it up. Does everybody have an answer? Huh. Maggie, are you ready? Yep. Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Seth saying surf and turf. Marge saying surf and turf. Chester saying escargot. Randall saying surf and turf. The rest of the room said <laughs> surf and turf. And they got it right. Man, the correct answer was easy. surf and turf. <laughs> or I had for, escargot on a steak not too long ago. <laughs> <laughs> for Fancy. our Australian listeners, it is reef and beef. Oh, I like that. Oh, oh yeah. It's believed that the first surf and turf pairing was a filet mignon and Alaskan king crab legs. The combo caught in, caught on in Australia not long after, which they referred to as reef and beef. Some restaurant experiments with this term have led to things like the surf and turf burger, which is a beef burger that's topped with shrimp, lobster, or crab. But they don't call it a reef and beef at Outback Steakhouse, do they? Well, that's in America. Can you say it in that Australian well, that's accent? A, that's an Australian restaurant. Sure. Is it, though? Yeah. Is it? <laughs> as much as Texas Roadhouse is a Texas we used to go restaurant. To the, <laughs> back in my guiding days, we used to go to the Outback when they had those two-for-one drink specials. Ooh, what'd you get? Uh, eat. Margaritas? Cranberry vodka. Oh, like one time I had, I had a two-for-one drink special at an Outback, and they asked me if I wanted another one, and they brought out both of them while I was still on my second beer. Mm -hmm. I just thought... This must Australia seems very nice. <laughs> they got it figured out. <laughs> Question five: The topic is public lands. This national park in Virginia is the closest national park to Washington D.C. Again, the topic is public lands. This national park in Virginia is the closest national park to Washington D.C. Oh boy. 
boy, spelling. <laughs> Shit. Spelling does not matter. A confident <laughs> Randall and Brody. Seth has an answer. I've been confident on a couple today. I didn't mm. any good. Chester, you want to get this one right? No. Oh, my God. I feel like an idiot. Randall, have you been to this place? Well... If I, if it's what I'm thinking of, okay, I probably have been there in the deep dark recesses of my mm. past that I don't remember as a young child. This national park in Virginia is the closest national park to Washington D.C. Corey, without an answer, Corey, do you know any national parks in that side of the continent? No. Okay. I spend way more time in these national parks on this end of the uh -huh. continent. Does everybody who's going to come up with an answer have an answer? Kyle and Logan, we count you out. Marge, are you ready? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Seth saying Shenandoah. Marge saying Theodore Roosevelt. Chester saying Virginia Beach. Randall saying Shenandoah. Corey and Colin and Logan without an answer. Brody saying Shenandoah. He got it. The correct answer is the Shenandoah National Park. Shenandoah National Park is located about 70 miles straight west of the White House. Teddy Roosevelt supported making this area a national park in 1901, but it wasn't formally established as one until 1935. The park is best known for the Skyline Drive, which is a 105-mile road that follows the Blue Ridge Mountains for the entire length of the park. Phil, we're halfway through the game of trivia. Give us a scoreboard update. Sure thing. We've got Logan and Colin with two points apiece. Maggie, Corey, Chester, and Brody all have three points and tied up in first place, both with a perfect game, are Randall and Seth. Wow. Oh, very fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Randall didn't want to <laughs> sit by Seth when we came in the room. I'm glad that, that, was, a, that was a good choice. That was a mm -hmm. good choice. Question six. The topic is conservation. This medication, which Donald Trump said cured his COVID-19, can also be used to kill ticks that live on moose. This medication, which Donald Trump said cured his COVID-19, can also be used to kill ticks that live on moose. Randall seems to think he has this one right, going to keep the perfect game going. Rest the room not quite as confident. Seth, do you have this one right? I'll... Maybe. This medication, which Donald Trump said cured his COVID-19, can also be used to kill ticks that live on moose. Did anyone else say that it cured their COVID-19? We could talk about it after, okay. if you would like. Brody, do you have this one right? <laughs> um, pretty sure I do. I've heard, it, I've heard it talked about on multiple different platforms, oh. but I cannot think of it. Remember the name? We have Randall who's getting nervous. There's a, <laughs> yeah, I've got two in mind now. Okay, did he specifically attributed this to one particular? He said the word cure. Mm. He did not use the word moose. No, <laughs> I'm gonna. I mean, I don't think. It's... Mm. Is everybody ready? Randall. I just changed my answer. I might regret it, but... Is everybody ready? Oof. Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Seth saying ivermectin. Mm. Marge saying chloroform. <laughs> Chester saying permethrin. Randall is saying... What does that say, Randall? It's hydroxychloroquine. Corey saying bleach. Colin without an answer. I don't feel answer. good if you can't pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> don't feel good, Spencer. Logan <laughs> saying hydroxychloroquine. <laughs> Brody saying ivermectin. The correct answer... Is Ivermectin, mm. Seth keeps Woo! the perfect game going. Woo! Ticks are the top cause of death for moose that are less than a year old in New England. Some estimates say that between 70 and 90% of the region's moose calves are killed by ticks each year. Biologists have considered using Ivermectin to treat herds, but say it's almost impossible to get moose to eat the right dose on a frequent enough basis to have any kind of an impact. Randall, did you have ivermectin? I had it, then I erased it, and I wrote hydroxychloroquine, 
and then I wrote ivermectin at the bottom and crossed it out to suggest that I had, in fact, been. Uh -huh. Randall, did you take <clears throat> ivermectin? You were right there. I did not. You were I right did there. not. But I need something because now I feel absolutely sick to my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> you asked Seth if other folks have used it. I saw it's been it's been used quite a bit, but I don't think whether it's the FDC or the CDC, they haven't approved it for. Uh, like widespread use yet. So I don't know yeah. how popular it is anymore. Question seven, the topic is navigation. This next great question comes to us via Steven Rinella. If you have a question you think is right for Meat Eater Trivia, you can send it to trivia at themeateater.com. The official prime meridian, which separates the hemispheres and establishes time zones, is located in this country. The official prime meridian, which separates the hemispheres and establishes time zones, is located in this country. Randall and Chester each have answers. Chester, do you have this one right? Probably not. Randall, how about you? Yes. And you know it or you're guessing? Well, you must, you I think this question it. is worded... I have some questions about the question. <laughs> and you'll have to take it up with Steve uh, because he wanted to be involved in the wording of the question and this is what he agreed on. Hmm. This, the official prime meridian which separates the hemispheres and establishes time zones is located in this country. Brody, do you have this one right? I haven't even written anything down okay. yet. Okay. Either is Seth who has the perfect game going through six questions. Well, I'm screwed now, Spencer. <laughs> well, you could still just write down a country, keep you in the game. I still feel physically <laughs> <laughs> upset. <sighs> Topic was navigation. Is everybody ready? No. Perfect Wild game guess. on the line for Seth. Marge, you ready? Yep. Just think of big ones. You know? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Seth saying Patagonia. Marge saying Panama. <laughs> Chester saying Russia. Randall saying England. Corey saying Indonesia. Colin saying Australia. Logan saying Ecuador. Brody saying Greenland. We have a correct answer in the room. It's England. Oh. Randall got it right. Son of a Steve texted me that this would be a great trivia question, to which I responded, I don't think anyone is going to get it right, and I think you and Brody would complain about its connection to Meat Eater. And then Steve said, it's latitude and longitude, it's the basis of geography and navigation and GPS. I would have gotten it. I guarantee <laughs> Randall and Brody would get it. I then told Steve that I think it would be a 0%. I was right. going to say Ireland, but like the whole dividing hemispheres thing is what threw me. Well, it's a specific point. It's a it's a town, isn't it? The way that's worded, Greenwich, 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 that's Greenwich. 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 The way that's worded makes oh, it sound Greenwich like meantime. half of England is in the Western Hemisphere and half of England is in. Like, well, it probably is then. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Okay, I would. Yeah, again, this you can take it up sense. with Steve. I I didn't love this no, question. Like, my, other, like, my other my other <laughs> no, yeah. nation <laughs> versus country. <laughs> Mm. That was the <laughs> forgot that, about East and West. That was another and and question I had about the question, but I'd like to move on. I feel pretty good about this. <laughs> question eight. Does. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> question eight. The topic is foraging. This is a visual question where Phil is going to show the room a picture. If you want to see what the room is seeing, then go watch this episode on Meat Eater's YouTube channel. Here's your prompt. You won't find this fruit in grocery stores because of its incredibly short shelf life. And this is a visual question. The topic is foraging. You won't find this fruit in grocery stores because of its incredibly short shelf life. A very confident room. Almost everyone except for Colin. Oh, I'm not confident. Brody not confident. I'm having a rough one. Seth, you have this one right. Now. Oh, I think so. I think... Mm, I won't say okay, that. Okay, okay. <laughs> Corey, do you have this one right? No. Does that look familiar at all? Unfortunately not. Here's how specific you need to be for your answer. If you thought the answer was tundra swan, you could just say swan. Hmm. What? 
No, he's I'm, setting himself up for an argument now. Yeah. I, well, I just don't. And, and, uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure how I'd have variations on my answer, although it happens to be a wild ass guess, so it doesn't really. Again, you can see this photo on Meat Eater's YouTube channel. The prompt is You won't find this fruit in grocery stores because of its incredibly short shelf life. Is everybody ready? Mm hmm. Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Seth saying mulberry, Marge saying huckleberry berry, Chester saying elderberry, Randall is saying choke cherry, Corey saying salmon berry, Colin saying berry, Logan saying mulberry, Brody saying elderberry. I want to change my answer to berry. We have a correct yes. answer in the room. It's a mulberry. Few folks got it right. Now, the, this getting specific, there are white mulberries, there are red mulberries, um, I think there are even black mulberries. Mulberries are native to North America and Asia. Their flavor is described as a cross between a blueberry, blackberry, and raspberry because they're difficult to harvest and can only be refrigerated for a few days. They rarely show up in grocery stores. If you want to learn how to cook with them, then go to TheMeatEater.com and check out Jenny Wheatley's recipe for mulberry jam. Are those the ones the carp like to eat when they fall in the yeah. water. I think so. I think anything we, likes to eat them. We used to have one of these in our backyard, and, and they this, make a mess. Yeah, so we had a white carpet in our house mm. at the time, and my mom <laughs> would get so pissed because uh -huh. I would walk through yeah. the mulberries on the ground and then walk on that white carpet, and it would stain it. A lot of cities have outlawed the planting of mulberries for a lot of reasons. They create a lot of pollen, and they stain everything up. People don't yep. want them overhanging sidewalks. They also attract a lot of things like, uh, you know, if carp like them, birds like them, raccoons like them. That is the mulberry. Hmm. Phil, we have two questions left. Where does the leaderboard stand? Colin, Maggie, Logan, Corey, Chester, and Brody have all been eliminated. Hmm. But we've got Randall with six points and Seth with seven. Wow. This mm. is fun. Coming for you, Randall. Question nine. Mm. <laughs> the topic is fishing. This next great question comes to us via Caleb McLean. If you have a question you think is right for Meat Eater Trivia, you can send it to trivia at themeateater.com. What is the only great lake that you can't fish with a Canadian license? Topic is fishing. What is the only great lake that you can't fish with a Canadian license? A confident Seth. I wish I had me a map. That would help. Now that some of you folks who didn't get the last question right heard the answer of mulberry, did, did you then know it? Like, oh, I know what a mulberry is. Mm -hmm. No. Not you, Corey? No. Doesn't seem like something we have in Montana. The so. native uh, red mulberry, it ends at about like southeastern South Dakota, but then it goes all the way to the Atlantic Ocean. So if there are mulberry trees around here, someone brought them here. I know people like to fish mulberry flies for carp. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay. I like that. I know that um, all around some mulberry bushes, monkeys mm. will chase a weasel. Uh-huh. Oh. I almost wrote this question as like oh, referenced been... in Pop Goes the Weasel, this fruit or something like that. But that would have been fabulous. Picture would I would have gotten better. it. No question. You would have known it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Big on nursery rhymes. <laughs> Again, what is the only Great Lake that you can't fish with a Canadian license? Does everybody have an answer? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Seth saying Michigan, Marge saying Huron, Chester saying Erie, Randall saying Michigan, Corey saying Erie, Colin saying Huron, Logan saying Superior, Brody saying Michigan. The correct answer is Lake Michigan. A few mm. folks got it right. Lake Michigan is the only great lake that's not an international waterway. Superior, Huron, Ontario, and Erie are all shared between the United States and Canada, though. The bed of Lake Michigan is owned by the four states of Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, and Michigan. Phil, we have one question left. Tell us how Randall and Seth are doing. Uh, they're still separated by one point because they both got the uh, Lake Michigan answer. We got Seth with eight and Randall with seven. I thought of an interesting fact relating mm. to the question a few okay. ago sure. about uh, the Prime Meridian. That's Greenwich Mean Time. That's so when you look at time zones and G, mm -hmm. everything is plus or minus GMT. That's 
That's why more people should know, should have known that answer. When I was talking to Steve, he said, Randall will know what the Greenwich um, Mean Time is. That's fantastic. Did Thanks. you guys so talk Steve about this? a question I don't, that Randall would well, know. I, know. I, I know. think you guys yeah. were in a meeting at some point. No, I, I okay. can't think of the last... I, I mean, obviously the name didn't, it didn't come to mind until now, but I just have been turning over Greenwich in my head. Question 10. Steve should be thinking of questions that everyone else will get right. I agree. I agree. Question 10. <laughs> the topic is hunting. What bow brand has models like the Carbon Matrix, Carbon Spider, and Carbon Defiant? A confident Seth and Randall, which would mean this game is going to end with Seth as the winner. But we'll see what they have when we flip over the boards. Not, and the question is, confident. what bow brand has models like the Carbon Matrix, Carbon Spider, and Carbon Defiant? A very confident room all around. Is everybody ready? Go ahead and <laughs> reveal your answers. We have Seth saying Hoyt, Marge without an answer. Chester saying Hoyt, Randall saying Hoyt, Corey and Colin and Logan and Brody all saying Hoyt. They got it. The correct answer is Woo. Hoyt. Hoyt Archery was started by Earl Hoyt Sr. in 1931. Since archery returned to the Olympics in 1972, Hoyt has won the most medals in the hunting community. Hoyt is known for their flagship carbon bows, which they've been building for about 15 years. Seth is our winner with nine correct answers. Yeah. Well done, yeah, Seth. Yeah, yeah. That was my best trivia ever. Just imagine if I didn't have that hard-ass Steve question in there. It could have been a perfect game I know. Thanks, for Steve. Seth. That was a dumb question. Seth, as the winner, <laughs> you get to choose where the $500 donation from Meat Eater goes. What's it going to be? Uh, I'm going to do turkeys for tomorrow. Oh, okay. I don't know that we've given to them before. We've I think given we to have. The other... Okay, I know we've done NWTF. I don't know we've done anyway, turkeys for yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. What do you like about them? I just love turkeys, and mm -hmm. they're just another conservation org that's de dedicated to the wild turkey that's doing good work. So and They have a fun logo. It's got all them dang turkeys on. I think there's there even a chick in the logo. I don't remember. Mm, there might be, yeah. Well done, Seth. $500 going their way. Almost the perfect game. Waiting for another one to happen. Join us next time for more Meat Eater Trivia, the only game show where conservation always wins. <laughs>